Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our call today and tuning in to listen to our conversation about some key post-secondary terminology as we go through. Um, we are the recruitment team and the chief experience officer team at St. Jerome's University at the University of Waterloo. We're going to start with some quick introductions so you know who's on the call with you folks today, and then we're going to turn it over to our current students to take you through some of these key pieces of um, weird words, let's just call them, um, that happens when you move from high school to, to university and college. So um, I'm Tommy Mayberry, my pronouns are he, she, and they, and I'm the manager of outreach and recruitment here at St. Jerome's University. I'm going to pass it to Olivia to introduce herself. Thanks, Tommy. Hi, everyone. My name is Olivia Carvalho. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the admissions and recruitment coordinator here at St. Jerome's University. And I'll pass it over to Catherine. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine. I also use she, her pronouns, and I'm a current student. I study honors in environmental science with a specialization in ecology. I'm actually currently on a co-op term, so I'm working at St. Jerome's right now. I'm working as the outreach and recruitment associate, and I've been having a great time so far. So we'll pass it on to our actual real students now. So Victoria, you want to take it away? Thanks, Catherine. So hi, everybody. My name is Victoria. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm a third year student majoring in statistics and minoring in actuarial science and history. And I'll pass it along to Shelby. Thanks, Victoria. I'm Shelby. I am a current student in my fourth year at the University of Waterloo for Honors Psychology and Business. And I'll pass it off to our final member, Tristan. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tristan. I use he, him pronouns. Um, and my I am doing a double major currently with Honors Political Science and Honors Visual Culture. Thanks, folks, for introducing yourselves. Uh, I'm going to start off with what I thought was one of the most confusing words when I was, once upon a time, I won't tell you how many years, but when I was applying to university, and that is that word bachelor, because when you're applying for a university degree, they're called bachelor degrees, um, and that word to me um, meant something very different than a degree I'd be studying. So um, folks on the call, bachelor, what does that mean? Um, I can start off with this one. So a bachelor's degree in the context of university does not mean someone who isn't married yet. Um, it's the degree awarded to you after you've completed your undergraduate studies at your university. So your first level of university studies, um, which you enter into right after you finish high school. Um, and depending on what you choose to study, you can be awarded different types of bachelor degrees. And you might have heard of these or seen the abbreviations. Um, so, for example, there's like Bachelor of Science, which is BSc, or Bachelor of Arts, which is a BA. Um, and so if you study like English, you'll get a Bachelor's of Arts. And if you study chemistry, you'll get a Bachelor's of Science. Most bachelor's degrees are not program specific. So let's say a student studying physics and a student studying biology will both receive a Bachelor's of Science upon graduation. Um, and right after bachelor's degree, I think a nice one to just see again too is the master's degree. So if anyone wants to take that. I can take this one. So a master's degree is something that you can take after you've completed your undergraduate degree, so your bachelor's degree. Um, it is a step up from your bachelor's. Um, it's a continuation of whatever you've studied in your undergraduate degree. Um, so you cannot go straight from high school to a master's. You'd have to start off with your undergraduate, then continue on if you so choose. Um, and there's also, just like a bachelor's degree, different types of master's degree. So similar to what Catherine said, um, if you have a master's of arts, then it's an MA, master's of science, MSc, similar like that. I sometimes like to think of the difference between undergrad and grad um, using that word under, right? If you think of grad as that second step in university, undergrad is just under that. It's that first step in university. So right out of high school, undergraduate studies, and those can lead to graduate studies as well. And the degrees are the bachelor at the undergrad level and then a master's at the graduate level. I know it's confusing. We have two. We have two words for what you're doing: undergrad studies and bachelor degree for it. But those are all that first step on the the um, the university pathway for it for your studies. Um, and I think another important thing to think of as well is the bachelor degree is usually three to five years that it can take, um, and master's degrees are sometimes one to three years. So they're a little bit shorter of programs. You need the bachelors to get into them. 
and they're usually more research intensive than they are taking um, a bunch of courses along the way as well. Um, which is also different what happens in the undergrad. So I think maybe next someone wanted, if someone wanted to chat about majors and minors that happen in the undergrad program. I think before we jump into that, we might wanna to touch on one more word with a double meaning, which is graduate. And a graduate is someone that has completed their studies. Like you will probably soon be graduating from your high school, um, or if you've completed your undergraduate degree, your bachelor's degree, then you're a graduate of that degree but it can also mean that you're pursuing a higher education um, beyond the undergraduate degree. So this can mean a master's or a PhD program, um, which is a little bit different than uh, someone who's completed the program. It could mean you're a current student. Now I'll pass it back over. Yeah, I can answer to what majors and minors are. So basically I, when I was going through my process of applying for school, I was super confused by the major and minor thing. I was like, a program, major, two different things, what's going on over here? So really what a major is to clear it up for all you who may be confused like I was. Uh, a major is a subject that's your main focus of your degree. So it's most of where your courses will be in. Um, it really determines what sort of degree you'll graduate with. And a lot of the time program and major will mean the same thing. Um, and then looking at minors, it's kind of like a specialization with under your major so you'll look at you'll take a few courses if you would like not everyone has to have a minor you can if you'd like to um but it doesn't determine what type of degree you have so you will have to take a few courses to fulfill a minor requirement if you so decide to take one and it doesn't have to be in the same area as your major so for example i'm doing a major in math another minor in math and then a minor in the faculty of arts so you can definitely have that cross disciplinary learning if you would like by adding on a minor to your degree. I think the best way to think about how much of your degree will be focused on your major and how much will be focused on other areas because bachelor's degrees tend to be pretty well rounded and we ask you to take subjects outside of your major focus area to pursue other interests and um, so that you're graduating with a really well-rounded degree and skill set, you'll probably be taking about 16 major credits and then your remaining of the 40 that total your bachelor's degree will be subjects outside of that major. So you'll have lots of flexibility and time to try out other areas of study um, beyond just your major focus. Another fun little language tip there, kind of like the undergrad for it, is it really is the majority of your courses are going to be in that field of major study and the minority of your courses are going to be collected in that minor study. So there's another reason why those two mean something for that, major and minor for it, but they tend to become nouns then when we talk about what's your major, um, but it does mean, as Victoria was saying, your major focus, your major area of study, which then is your program for that. I can also add on to minor that if you think you might like to do a minor, but you don't really want to commit to it just yet, you don't have to declare your minor, like really at any point, you can do all of the required courses and then declare your minor or you can do two and then declare a minor or do none and declare your minor and then do all of them. Um, it really depends. There's a lot of freedom in that. Yeah, and to add on to what Catherine's saying, for a lot of programs, your major isn't set in stone. Now, this isn't true for every single program. I know for engineering at Waterloo, it is kind of set in stone, but you can easily switch for most programs. If you decide, oh, this isn't what I actually wanted, this is more interesting, you can easily switch by just letting an advisor know and talking to them and seeing what you need to do for course requirements. Yeah, and adding on to what uh, Victoria said, I actually used to be uh, in English in and doing an English major up until very recently, um, where I was actually able to make the switch into political science uh, purely out of interest, uh, like changes in interest. And it was like, um, it's such a, it's a very easy, uh, it's a very easy form that you complete. And it's a very, and the process altogether is very simple. Uh, the advisors explain it to you very simply as well, and yeah. Now that we're talking about 
switching between majors and switching between areas and stuff. Um, we're also talking about where you're moving between different departments as well then. And then we're talking about larger things like science, those would be faculty. So does someone wanna talk about the differences between, or even what they are, between departments, faculties, schools, those kinds of um, pieces that make up the university and how you're studying? I can take that one. So um, a faculty is essentially a high level collection of like academic departments um, and or professional schools that are all related in some way. So different universities will have different faculties like at U Waterloo we have six, there's arts, science, engineering, math, environment and applied health sciences. So under the faculty, you get your department and then under department you get individual majors so like major is less than department is less than faculty um, just an example i'm a science major so i'll use science the faculty of science has many departments including the department of biology the department of chemistry physics and astronomy among others and those departments can then be broken down into separate majors slash programs and those majors are the ones you will actually be applying to on uvac Tell me, do you think you could touch on what a prerequisite is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so prereqs, prerequisites, um, those are the courses that you'll need to have taken in high school in order to apply to university. So when we're thinking about those programs, um, or the programs run by the, or the different majors, all university programs do require that you have English. Um, now it is any grade 12 U English that you're able to take um, in Ontario um, for that then. So that is a prereq that you need um, to get into university. Other specific programs will have other specific prereqs, prerequisite requirements. So for the sciences, for example, um, you would probably need to have a grade 12 U chemistry or biology or physics. And those would be listed as those required courses um, you need for that. Sometimes they'll say things like two of three so it will list chemistry, biology, physics, and you'll need to have two of those for it. So it can sound tricky sometimes when you're getting into um, what all of those are. Because um, thinking about math, for example, as well, there would be grade 12 calculus or advanced functions that sometimes engineering is asking for for those as well. But when you see that prereq, um, prerequisite for it, that's what that means. Are those courses that you've needed to collect and complete along the way um, in order to have the um, the foundational knowledge and experiences to start off on a strong foot when you get to university in um, in that program. And to make it more complicated at the university level, so beyond applying, when you're going through your years at university, your courses also have prerequisites, and they also have two other terms called anti-requisite and co-requisites, just to make it all the more confusing, right? So like Tommy just said, um, prerequisites are courses you need to take before taking that upper year course in university, but anti-requisites are basically courses you can't take at the same uh, time or courses if you took that one, let's say course A is an anti-requisite to course B, you can't take course B if you take in course A. Co-requisite is like a prerequisite, but you can also take it at the same time. So if co uh, course A is a co-requisite of course B, you can either take course A and course B at the same time, or you can take course A before course B and you're all good for requisites. So just make sure you're aware of those two other ones because I wasn't, and I was also very confused when it came time to second year to time to pick my courses. I was like, where is this coming from? Help, I need an advisor. So key to note those two terms. And that's something that an academic advisor is definitely there to support you with and help you work through what your requirements are, which courses that you need to take in which order, and in order to complete your degree um, with all of the right courses. And speaking of degrees, someone tell me a little bit about what an honors degree is and how that might be a little bit different. So I can take this one. Um, an honors degree is a little bit different in that um, they usually have different course requirements and sometimes higher admission averages as well. So in general, um, a honors degree will require more credits in a subject area of your choice, uh, which means more specialization for that choice and program and less elective space than a non-honors degree. Um, in some programs, this honors degree might require you to write a thesis, but that is very dependent upon which program you pick. Um, 
Um, I will add that it is possible to switch from a general to an honors degree or vice versa. Um, let's say you get into fourth year and you have to write a thesis and you realize you really don't want to write this thesis, you can switch down to a general degree. Or if you're already in a general degree and your average and the courses you've taken fulfill the requirements, you can ask an advisor if you can switch into the honors um, type as well. Tristan, what's a collaborative degree? So, um... A collaborative degree is where you can basically uh, you can basically uh, take a couple another major um, if I'm not mistaken another major uh, in addition in addition to uh, one like centralized major you already have. Catherine, is there another type of collaborative degree? Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, so um, collaborative degrees or collaborative programs are, you might have heard of these, they're like joint programs between a university and a college. So sometimes a university and the college will partner up to do this. Um, students in collaborative programs will graduate with both a university degree from the university and a college diploma from the college. And the perk of this is you get both the like applied hands-on um, specialization of the college and you get the more academic focused side of the university and an actual university degree as well. Um, another perk is that collaborative degrees, as far as I know, usually don't take any more time to complete than a regular university degree, um, which is great because it means you don't have to spend extra time, but you still graduate with both a university degree and a college diploma. And there are a couple other things that come to mind when you're thinking about collaborative degrees as well, and those can be double degrees. So sometimes there are partnerships between two universities where one, for example, what Waterloo has, um, we have a partnership with Laurier with their business school so that you can do your business degree at Laurier while doing another degree um, at Waterloo for a kind of double degree. Um, and then there also are some programs that have partnerships with teachers colleges. So you're able to do your um, undergrad studies, your bachelor's degree, um, um, in your major, bringing all those terms together, um, while working toward um, making sure you have the prerequisites for teachers college um, after that as well. So there are several different ways that other types of um, career paths and other types of experiences can all come together. Um, which leads me to ask of all of you for um, current students then, um, a question about why you chose university instead of college for where you wanted to go for post-secondary then. Because they're not they're different, but one's not better than the other. Um, so thinking about all these ways they're connected, um, what are your stories when it came to university instead of college? I'm sorry, I should pass, I'll pass it to Victoria first. Yeah, sorry, thanks, Tommy. Um, I was really looking for an academic experience uh, with the side of applied learning. So I really loved the co-op that was offered through university level degrees and especially at Waterloo. And that was something that I really wanted to get out of my own education. Um, and math is a very specialized program sometimes, especially in my particular major of statistics. So I was really looking only at university programs and yeah, that's where I ended up really. So I'm gonna hand it off to Tristan then to also answer this question. Um, yeah, so I, I think for a while, I personally wanted to uh, do university. Do university um, for for reasons looking back now that I'm not entirely sure I can say for sure. I did, however, know that it would be it would certainly be nice to um, get it to also co-register with St. Jerome's um, and then get the and sort of get the university college degree. Uh, indicated on a Waterloo diploma as well as we were previously talking about. Um, so in the end, I kind of, I, it's kind of hard to say how I I made the decision itself, but I'm really happy I did. Um, and that's, and that's how I got here. <laughs> um, I can go next. So I chose university instead of college because I knew in high school that I didn't want to stop at just my undergraduate. I knew I wanted to go do some kind of graduate or maybe a professional school, like, like I don't know, law school or my master's or something. So um, those programs would require me to have a university degree. Um, so basically I 
had to go to university and I was also looking for that more kind of academic experience so I thought it was really great that Waterloo offered um, the co-op part as well like Victoria for the hands-on portion. Um, Shelby do you want to conclude? Sure so I in when I was in high school I actually had a very large debate I was debating between law school and being a welder so um, I was trying to decide between college and university. So ultimately I ended up picking university um, because I decided on the career path of being a lawyer. Um, but ultimately that was just the major influence. Um, both college and university offered great opportunities for different kinds of interests. It's just the main interest that I set, decided to settle on is that um, what influenced my decision to come to university. I'm glad that we get to end on those um, stories um, rather than just chatting about some of those confusing terms that we can hear about um, decisions that we are making in high school as well. Um, but we are at our time for this call. So I am going to thank you folks um, who were sharing your stories and experience with us today. I'm going to thank you folks um, who um, tuned into this recording to um, listen in on our conversations here. And when I send this um, this link along as well, uh, or the, the video along as well, I'll send some contact info in case anyone wants to follow up with anything as well as some other um, parts and pieces like tips and tricks for applying to university as well as some sample schedules so um, thank you folks for joining me our chief experience officers on this call um, and we look forward to chatting with everybody who wants to know more about university post-secondary or St. Jerome's and Waterloo specifically so thanks everyone <laughs>